Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is vectors. In this lesson, we're going to review a number of vector concepts relating to vectors in two-dimensional space and apply those concepts to vectors in three-dimensional space. Let's begin with notation. I'll start with the example vector P. I'll put an underline under the P to use the notation to indicate P is a vector. And one way I could write P is as a column matrix. And we've seen two components of the column matrix, X and Y, which in this case I will use 3 for X, negative 1 for Y. And we'll have a third component, which is Z. And for this Z, we'll use the value of 4. Our interpretation is that this vector moves three units in the positive direction on the x-axis, one unit in the negative direction on the y-axis, and four units in the positive direction on the z-axis. In working with vectors in three-dimensional space, unlike vectors in two-dimensional space, the diagramming is a bit difficult, so we're simply going to focus on the numerical analysis. Let's talk about three different types of vectors we'll be working with. We'll skip unit vector for a moment and talk about position vector and displacement vector. In the example of vector P, this is a position vector if our starting point is the origin. A position vector identifies movement from the origin. A displacement vector identifies movement from a starting point that may or may not be the origin. So if this is a position vector, we've moved three positive on the x-axis, one negative on the y-axis, four positive on the z-axis from the origin. If it's a displacement vector, then we've moved from some starting point that may or may not be the origin the same direction. In referencing unit vector, let's look at another notation we can use for vector p. We can write vector p as 3i minus j, and we've seen i and j as unit vectors for vectors in two-dimensional space. Now in three-dimensional space, we'll have plus 4k, referencing the z component. In this example, our unit vectors are i, j, and k. A unit vector is a length of 1. Vector p has a description of three units positive on the x-axis, one unit negative on the y-axis, and four units positive on the z-axis. Those units are referenced by i for the x-axis, j for the y-axis, and k for the z-axis. So we've discussed the concept of unit vector, a vector with a length of 1. Position vector is a vector with a starting point of the origin. And displacement vector can have any starting point. Let's move on to looking at vector addition and subtraction. I'm going to start with vectors a and b and I will show them in another notation. Vector OA, starting from O and going towards A, which we will call vector A, is a column matrix of 4, 2, and 7. And vector OB, which we will label as vector B, which we'll express as a column matrix of 3, 4, negative 1, and we're going to find vector AB. This is the vector starting at point A and going to point B. In order to determine the correct mathematical operation, we need to correctly interpret the original vectors. OA and OB both have a tail of O and a head of A and B. They both start from O and go in different directions. Therefore, the resultant vector of AB is going to be a subtraction operation. Now, it's important that we use the correct order of subtraction. For AB, with B as the head, we start with the vector that goes in the direction of the head of the resultant vector, which is vector B. And we subtract the vector going in the direction of the tail of the resultant vector, which is vector A. And to complete our calculation, we'll take the components of vector b, 3, 4, and negative 1, subtracting the components of vector a, 4, 
2 and 7 to arrive at the resultant vector of negative 1, 2, and negative 8. In that example, we've seen vector addition and subtraction, in our case, subtraction. Addition is a very similar process. You simply add the x components, then the y components, then the z components, instead of subtracting, as we did in our example. Let's now go down to magnitude. We're going to calculate the magnitude of vector AB. And you should remember the calculation of magnitude of a vector from your prior vectors work. We're going to take the square root of the sum of the squares of each component of the vector. In this case, we have a vector in three-dimensional space, and we have three components of the vector. The x component, the y component, and the z component. x component is negative 1. We square. The y component is 2, we square, and the z component is negative 8, which we square, and we add these three amounts to arrive at a value of the square root of 69. That's the magnitude of vector AB. That covers the concept of magnitude. Now let's look at the concept of scalar multiplication in the context of unit vector. Let's give a vector name to vector AB. We'll call vector AB vector G. And we're going to calculate the unit vector in the direction of vector G. Our notation is a hat over vector G, which is read as G hat, equals... We're going to apply a scalar. First, I will show my column vector components of negative 1, 2, and negative 8. Scalar multiplication means that we multiply each component of the vector by a particular scalar. In order to find the unit vector in the direction of vector g, we multiply by the scalar 1 over the magnitude of vector g multiplying by the scalar, whatever the scalar is, in this case 1 over the magnitude of g, means we multiply that scalar by the x component, negative 1, and by the y component, 2, and by the z component, negative 8. We know the magnitude of g, we've just calculated that as square root of 69, and so our unit vector in the direction of vector g will be the x component, negative 1 over the magnitude, square root of 69, and 2, the y component, over square root of 69, and the z component, negative 8 over square root of 69. Now we've seen the concept of scalar multiplication, and as one final analysis, we're going to verify that what we've calculated as the unit vector in the direction of vector g is, in fact, a vector with a length of 1. We'll calculate the magnitude of g hat. And that's going to be the square root of the squares of the three components of the vector. Negative 1 over root 69 squared is 1 over 69 plus 2 over root 69 squared is 4 over 69 plus negative 8 over root 69 squared is 64 over 69. When we sum these three values, we end up with the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is 1. That's our verification that we have, in fact, calculated the components of a vector with the length of 1. So we've reviewed several concepts from prior work with vectors in two-dimensional space to see their application to vectors in three-dimensional space, and this concludes Vectors Lesson 1.